Okay YouTube, so today I'm going to talk to you about how to start a back to Eden garden. Um, first, I want to clarify the difference between what Paul does in his vegetable garden and what he does in his orchard. So, in his vegetable garden, he doesn't use big normal arborist wood chips like you would typically get from like Chip Drop or any arborist that comes through town. Um, in his garden, he uses sifted chicken run compost from his chickens over there, and he also uses composted wood chips that have been sifted. So, the composted sifted wood chips he gets from a, like, yard waste facility in town that piles everything up, composts it, then sifts it for him, and then he just goes and buys it for, I think it's like 20 bucks a yard or something like that. But it's worth it for him, it's less work. Um, so all he does is in the fall, he'll sift the chicken run compost, put that on the garden about half an inch to an inch deep, and then he goes on top of that and puts the sifted wood chip material. Um, he puts the compost on the bottom mainly because in his chicken run, because it's right up against the pasture and the woods and the fact that all of his yard waste goes to the chickens, there's a lot of weeds mixed it like weed seeds mixed into the their compost. So by putting it down first and then covering it with like an inch or two of wood chips of the sifted stuff, it pretty much eliminates the weed problem. There are still weeds obviously because weed seeds blow in from all over the yard and everyone else's yards. Um, but yeah, that's really simple. That's all he does for his vegetable garden. He does that every other year. I don't know if I mentioned that, but um, yeah, it's real easy. Uh, he does once, Since he does it in the fall, it has time to settle, and then in the spring he'll come over and he'll just break his little row and then plant right in that. And then being that there's only an inch or two of the fine sifted stuff, he can technically just plant right in it because it's already composted. Um, other than that, it's that's really all he does with this garden. It's really easy, low maintenance. When it comes time to plant, all he does, he puts the seeds in in the spring and then waters them in. And once they come up and sprout up out of the ground, then he stops watering because by then the plants have enough roots that they can tap into the moisture in the soil. Um, the sifted chips and compost as a covering keeps plenty of water in the ground, at least in the spring. Sometimes in the summer, depending on his crop, he'll supplement the water. Um, but yeah, that's that. Now I'm going to take you into the orchard and I'll show you what it's going to look like when you start your own back to Eden garden and you're, if you're using actual wood chips and not the fine sifted fancy stuff that he likes. Okay, so we're in the orchard. This is where he actually has full size wood chips. They're like, the pieces are a good one to maybe even three inches in size, and then everything in between. Um, as of right now, I think there's a good, let's just see. There's a good two inches of whole new chips down on top of the soil that he's created over the last 40 years. Um, when it comes to starting a garden with actual wood chips, more than likely, I'm just assuming you're starting with sod or grass. So what I would recommend doing is getting rolls of contractor's paper. You can get that at like any con like construction store, like Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever. Um, and I would cut the grass really, really short and then roll out the contractor's paper. Just one sheet thick, that paper's thick enough. You could use uh, newspaper. The only thing, I just really don't like using that because if you've got a windy day, and there's plenty of them here in Washington, um, 
they can be kind of a pain because the papers will just blow all over the place and you have to keep them wet and they still blow all over the place at the same time but with a contractor's paper you can easily just roll out it roll it out the length of your garden put some dirt or compost on top of it and that'll hold it down and it'll be perfectly fine um, <clears throat> so yeah, cut the grass really, really short, put the contractor's paper down, and then I'd go and put whatever organic matter you have, like grass clippings, leaves, whatever you've got, um, and then on top of that, you can even use hay, and then on top of that I'd put compost, maybe two to three inches, you can go more, but you really don't need to, um, so yeah, two to three inches of compost, and when I say compost, it can either be like your own yard waste that you've composted or chicken manure and horse manure or any kind of manure really. Um, put that on top of the organic matter. And then on top of the compost, you're going to want to put your wood chips. I wouldn't do any more than three inches of wood chips for a vegetable garden. In an orchard setting, I'd go ahead and put eight inches down just because it'll last longer. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Now, about the wood chips, a lot of people have concerns about the types of wood chips. So you've got your, like, trees like cedar and pine and walnut. Specifically, people hate walnut. I hate walnut. There's all sorts of reasons why I hate walnut, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, so those types of wood that people say don't put in your garden. I typically don't put in my garden. I've used pine for years, but I haven't really seen a problem with it. However, if you feel like you shouldn't use it in your garden, don't. Use that in your orchard. Your trees aren't going to mind it. But the guard, some of the annual plants that you grow as vegetables, they will mind it. Like, one of the reasons why I don't like walnut is because I used to grow plants in a nightshade family, like peppers and tomatoes and potatoes and stuff. And I had a huge walnut tree next to the garden, and that basically made it so I could not grow nightshades because of the jug loan that the tree released into the soil. So yeah, I avoid walnut wood chips. Plus, like trees like that, other than pine, the wood takes a really long time to break down. And in a vegetable garden, you want to really speed up the process as you build your soil. So in the orchard, your trees are going to be there for years. So you've got time to build that soil up. In the garden, you don't have as much time as you would your trees. So woods like that go in the orchard. Soft woods like, um, mm, drawing a blank, uh, like alder and sweet gum and stuff like that. Those kind of wood chips, if you have them or can get access to them, I love those. They break down rapidly and they really build amazing soil. If you're planting in wood chips, like if your garden looks like Paul's orchard and it's got two to three inches of whole actual non-composted wood chips, you don't want to plant straight into the chips. That's a no-no. You're going to get stunted plants. Plants aren't going to do good. Just don't do it. Trust me. When you're planting, what you want to do is rake your chips aside. And this is my row. Okay, I'm pretty sure you can see that, but if not, I'll add some pictures or something. You're gonna break your row, so you get down to the expo so you expose the compost or the native soil below. Then I like to typically rough it up a little bit just so it's easier to plant in. Get these chips out. Okay, so you're down to your soil. All you have to do, plant right in that, depending on the seed, like if it's carrots, that's a really small seed, I just sprinkle it on top and then kind of just like tickle the seed into the soil in a way. They don't really need to be covered all that much. They just need to stay damp. Um, same goes for like lettuce and stuff like that. But that's really what I do with all of my seeds actually. I just sprinkle them in, tickle them in a little bit, water it, keep it watered until they come up, and then that's it. 
It's really that simple. I don't even go back and, once the plants are up, I don't even go back and push the chips up. You can, and that's fine. But I found that gravity works, and the chips naturally erode back into the row. But at the end of the year, you can pull your plants up and just rake it, and then you're done. It's so simple. Okay, sorry about that, folks. Um, camera cut off on me. But, uh, yeah, it's really, it's not difficult. However, if you have questions about it, feel free to ask me. That's why I'm here. That's why I started both my Instagram and now my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, definitely ask me. I'd love to help and answer, answer your questions. Um, Paul and I are actually going to be doing a, we're going to try to do, <clears throat> a uh, live stream once a month for like maybe an hour, hour and a half or so. Um, still trying to figure out what days, like we're going to set a specific day, like say the first week of each month to do the live stream at the same time. That way you guys can get on like a schedule and figure out when you want to do it or if you'll be able to do it and whatnot. But um, yeah, I think that would be really fun. It'll open up the opportunity for you all to get to talk to Paul in a way, have him answer your questions, and yeah, I just think it would be really fun to do it as like a monthly thing. Um, I'm going to try and get Paul on the, on the videos a lot more. I mean, I've only got three videos out. He's in one of them so far. Yeah. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Really looking forward to this year. There's going to be a lot of growth and all sorts of ways here. It'll be incredible, and I'm really excited to bring you guys along, so thank you. Happy gardening.